So Shelly Cornish and Paul Hurley, thank you so much for joining me all the way from Australia. Um, thanks for taking some time out of your training. And if it's okay with you, I'd just like to ask you a couple of questions in advance of the World Rowing Indoor Championships. Um, yeah, it's very exciting for us. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's very exciting for us to um, be in it. Like um, we um, just made up our minds to be in it like two months ago, right? After yeah. the Australian Nationals. Yeah. And um, and Paul said, why don't we go in the world? And I, and I just didn't say anything for a few days. And then I just said to him, I'll do it if you will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because I found out I was her her times were so good, I was curious what her times were in relation to other athletes in the world. And once I discovered that they were that good, I I, I my intent I never intended actually enter myself. I just wanted her to enter. But then when she said, "If I'm in, you're in." Yeah. I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that was it. Yeah. And we met. Um, uh, we met about um, two or three years ago three years yeah. ago mm -hmm. and um i just um went to a rowing event with a friend of mine to support her and i really enjoyed it and i thought oh i could do that so i just had a go at a state level and then the next year um and then i had a go at in the pan packs the pan pacific mm -hmm. games mm -hmm. and the following year i met I'd, I'd met paul and that was two and a half years ago and um and he came and watched me go in the pan packs as well mm -hmm. And then, then COVID turned up. Yeah. And then, right. um, yeah. so, and last year was the first time that we've done it together, been able to compete together. Yeah. We just got married like a year ago. That's great. And thanks for, for sharing your background. And, and tell us a little bit about where you live and what you do for a living. And um, I know that you're living in Australia, but I don't, to be honest, know anything beyond that. Uh, well, I'm um, a school teacher. Um, I teach high school, um, high school maths and science, and um, I I am an indoor rower as well. He's a very good school teacher. <laughs> and then, oh, we do a lot of dragon boating as well. And we live in a small uh, regional town called Tintin Bar, northern New South Wales, which is really like halfway up the east coast of Australia. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a subtropical area, and we have where we live on a little macadamia farm. Yeah, and it's paradise. It's really idyllic. Yeah, mm. yeah. And and Shell has her art studio. I'm, a, here. I'm an artist. I paint, yeah. and um, uh, yeah, life's perfect for us right now. Yeah, since we found <laughs> each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. And that's great that you kind of are able to to seal your relationship with indoor rowing together as a couple. Um, I want to talk a little bit about that as husband and wife competing in an event together. I imagine that you're both, you're both, of course, athletes, but you're both each other's support team on race day. So how does that dynamic work? Um, you know, who, who preps the food in advance, who makes sure that nobody misses their start time? How does that work? Um, well, um, we have been a great support team for each other um, because we, and sometimes we we sit with each other while we're rowing, mm. you know, and um, and and in the beginning we would record, yeah. you know, the, the the little monitor and help each other out that way. And it's always it's really good to have someone to talk through it with. Um, we're both. Um, we both have very healthy lifestyles and, and very very healthy eating, and and so we we just work on that together. Mm. Um, uh, I do all the tech things because I'm so paranoid it's all going to collapse. On uh, us. <laughs> so yeah, I write everything down really meticulously. Um, yeah. And like Shell said, what actually gets me out of bed in the morning because I have to um, train before I go to work is knowing that she's going to do a monster training session by herself with me not there which means i have to do mine otherwise i'd be behind her so um and then because i've gotten out of bed at 5 30 to my row she feels oh i better do my session <laughs> as well now and then in the evening we'll both train together yeah it's yeah. it's been a real experience for us because we've never um trained like this before mm. you know before when i went in the few events that i went in um we i just start you know like five or six weeks before uh but this time um we started 
because yeah, we didn't plan yeah. to go on this yeah. far. We we trained up for the the Queensland and yeah. and the, the state and national, the national the states. Yeah. Yes. So we had um, and COVID was hit. So we just started riding bikes and building up our general fitness that way because mm. we couldn't go to the gym. Yeah. And um, and then it just kind of got stretched out and stretched yeah. out. So we've learned so much about. Um, preparing ourselves and protecting mm-hmm. ourselves and, and spreading our exercise across different kinds of platforms. Yeah. Um, and we live um, in a very hilly area. Yeah, so, like this everywhere. Yeah. So the bike riding has been a monster for our cardio. Yeah. It's been really good. Yeah. And um, we have a friend who taught us power training at the gym. So we got all our power from that. Yeah. And um, oh, yeah. So we've been just doing like two sessions a day for the last six months mm. six days a week and we're absolutely <laughs> exhausted now and i really like i really love the technique side of it mm. um so we we spend a lot of time working on our technique yeah as well as our um, fitness and um you know i'm because i'm a strong believer in in like really having connection with the machine you know um to be a really good rower and i think to do that you need to connect with your body first you need to know how your body moves and and the rhythms of your body Mm -hmm. and if you can find that that um balance um to make it connect with the machine well that's when you hit the sweet spot Mm -hmm. in rowing and Mm -hmm. it's really feels you can feel it when you do it Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and you wrote Sh- Sh- Shelly, she rose with her eyes I closed. Know. I've got to make myself keep my eyes open when mm. I'm in a competition so I can keep an eye on the on the uh, monitor. Yeah. But but 90% of the time, 95% of the time when I row at home, my eyes are closed because I'm so zoned into my mm. technique and and the feeling. And um, well, just sorry, just about 10 days ago on that, she broke her own national 500 meter record. With her eyes closed <laughs> <laughs> in, in one in one of her training it was a surprise. Yeah, it was a surprise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah so um and we've I, been chasing PBs all the time. We're always trying to push the boundary on what we're able to do. Mm, so yeah. It's it's lovely because I, I rode downstairs, you know, and I got this panoramic view of a little stream and a little waterfall and green fields and macadamia trees and stuff, you know. And sometimes I if it's a beautiful day and there's a lovely breeze, I will just sit down there and I'll I will just feel the breeze blowing around me and open my eyes every now and again and look at the view. I don't even look at the monitor. <laughs> and sometimes I just zone out on, on great music, hard rock, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, I, I wrote to doof music. Yeah, yeah, Paul loves his doofy dance music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So how did the two of you find indoor rowing to begin with? And what really was the thing that pushed you to enter in this competition? I went to support a friend of mine um, named Jan who was um, doing indoor rowing at the Pan Packs and I just went along to cheer her on and I saw and I went, oh, I could do that. So um, that's, that's, that was about nearly four years ago. Mm. And so the following year I went in the, in the Pan Packs myself or in the Queensland Nationals first, Queensland State, yeah, I should yeah, say. Yeah. Um, and then when I met Paul two and a half years ago, um, Oh, you only got into it last year, didn't you? Yeah, because you, you started me off. Yeah, the eight, first year. I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yep. And that was just because of the because of COVID. Yes. Yeah. Because we're already um, very fit because um, we do a lot of dragon boating as well. We were doing that three days a week and we were on a state um, team a couple of years ago as well. Yes. Yeah, and, we did a lot of that. Yeah, and we were doing a lot of bike riding. So we're already fit and healthy. Mm. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's it's been really interesting journey because um, I never imagined eight months ago that I would be here yeah. at all. We don't yeah. have a rowing, um, an indoor yeah. rowing club or anything where we live. So there is one up in um, the in Queensland. in Queensland, which is like more than an hour's drive. So um, we have to do do it on our own. There's nowhere. It'd be great if there was an indoor rowing club around here and you'd get a bunch of people together and just keep it going all year round. But yeah. it's hard to do that when you're, um, you only go to events a couple of times a year. Yeah. 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 Because the two of you are living in Australia, it means that your races are going to be quite late in the evening. What are you two doing to adjust to that re- late evening race time? 
be far away. Oh, um, so well, I'm back at work now. When we were, uh, I had my um, summer holidays from teaching for six weeks. Um, we were training twice a day and we were carrying on like a pair of lions. We just get up in the morning, um, have a coffee, and then very leisurely begin our training session in the morning. Then we'd have a snooze and then we'd just lay around a while and then we'd train again in the afternoon. Then we'd lay around a little bit more. Yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> time when you do a lot of yeah, training, we yeah, found out we have to yeah. have a little nana naps all yeah. the time. So, but now that I'm back at work now, um, we're trying to adjust our body clocks by gradually staying up a little later every night. And we've started pushing out our evening training session to later in the evening. So, for example, last night we were at the gym at 1030 in the nighttime because we have a race at 1130 at night and then at 1245 the following day. Um, so we've been taking half sleeping pills in the afternoon. So we force ourselves to sleep for three hours. We, or we, can't, we can't do that every day, though. No, no, so no. So we can only can't. do it once in a, but yeah, uh, yeah, we're fine. Right. We're not even sure that this system is going to work for us. We're just <laughs> trying it, and I think we're going to have so much energy and um, adrenaline on the day that wouldn't matter. We're just going to, you know, we're yeah. going to be firing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we are a little bit. I am more. Um, I'm a lot more alert late at night because normally we go to bed early in the evening. So I'm a lot more alert now with our little nana naps in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So after this interview. We're going to we're going to watch a movie, have something to eat, and then we'll do a little row in the dark outside on the veranda where the, the rower is <laughs> under the moonlight. And then we'll stay up a little longer and then go to sleep around 1 a.m. or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. Wow. And then have a big sleep in in the morning because I've taken leave from work all of next week during the um, championships so that I'll be able to sleep in on um, Monday morning and Tuesday morning. Yeah, we figured if we can um, stay up and party all night, we can surely stay up and row all night. Yeah, sure. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. What advice do you have for first-time competitors in a virtual indoor rowing event? Oh, gee, I have to have a little, a little think about that. Mm. Well, there's two things about it. One is the technical part and the other is the, is the rowing bit. Yeah, but if, if it's their first time event, they've probably done the technical part at home right, and they're okay. ready for it. So I guess not being intimidated. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, the first time I went there, I felt a little bit intimidated. Um, and just really, it's like a big family. Everyone's really friendly and lovely. And once you um, just relax around people, you know, I found that very comforting mm. um, and took the edge off it. Um, the, the other thing too is like the adrenaline can really sort of mess with your head on the day. So it's really important that you have a race plan, a strategy, um, and you stick to mm, it no, ma the, no matter what is happening yeah. around you. Um, so I remember at, when I went to Queensland State um, at our first event, Shelley continued throughout the entire 2K race to keep telling me to stick to the plan, stick to the plan, because I was last by a long way originally. And just because I heard her say, stick to the plan, stick to the plan, yeah, yeah I, I ended up winning it. Yeah, <laughs> you're, so, you're so excited and you get caught up in the moment and when you're, and you're adrenaline, you, you feel superhuman when you start the race, yeah. you know, and you feel like, oh, I've got this, I can go faster than I usually do. Yeah. And next, if you do that, you, you'll burn out. So yeah. you, go, you must have your race plan. Uh, you must know your race back to front, inside out. You must practice it and practice it and then stick to it. And that takes a lot of the pressure off and the yeah. worry if you know yeah. you can do that. And the last thing for the last 30 seconds of the race, <clears throat> you have to be really brave. Mm to dig into the pain because it it hurts as everybody knows yeah. 2k 500 meters it hurts so bad and we we are actually more intimidated by the pain rather than the competition yes ourselves yes and it's it, so taxing if you yeah. time it perfectly you should be going to fail in the last number of strokes yeah 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 that's, that's right. when you know you've you've yeah. you've run your perfect race so, so i reckon if your eyeballs don't roll into the back of your head you haven't <laughs> tried hard enough <laughs> That's great. Well, Paul and Shelley, I won't take up any more of your time away from training, but thank you so much for joining me and answering a couple of questions. And we're going to go back over to the studio to watch some more racing.